that is definitely for Amdur, and I do believe maybe this one here is for the, your War Priest. So what we're going to do those three things plus this, and probably add some more to our existing guys here, because you can see this is just some acrylic paint right here. And I can't even remember when I last was painted, probably over a year ago. And we'll just finish these guys up right here. I might even do another one with the the red like this, potentially. But this is what we are going to do here on this lad. And I, I just realized, okay, yeah, I, so I do have the the freehand set up for these guys. I'm glad I did the fringe now here, especially after seeing that. And let's see, we've got our, our purple over here. We've been using Prussian blue, I think, for that. You can see all of the reflected colors that are going on here. Tons of reflected colors. Look at the blue that's reflected in your armor right there. Will be, see, I don't think, we, yeah. Well, it's going to reflect here. So just like how the blue from the shield is reflecting on the on the gold there, it's going to reflect onto his leg here. I'm just looking for areas of reflection, but the, the marble stuff, this is so darn easy. Hey, Nessie, how are you doing? So I hope that you're uh, having some a good, nice, chill day here. And, oh, Nessie, I just saw... The Greyjoy starter box. I had no idea. Well, don't really know what those guys are to begin with, but I didn't realize that that's something that they were going to be doing. I was wondering where they're going to get additional factions from. Is there any particular colors that that we'll be seeing from those guys? I I have no idea who they're even attached to. Is it more Stark stuff? Is it more Baratheon stuff? I have no idea. What we are going to do, however is move some of these guys out of the line of fire. So, <clears throat> so Nessie, last night we were doing tons of sculpting here. This is some of the most challenging sculpting that I have done yet. Ah, so Viking-esque. So going to be, must be for Starks then, I guess. I'm just going to make sure that that... Uh, and I might even have to add a little bit of glue there once that dries. I've had to do that before with green stuff where it just doesn't want to hold or whatever. But I like that little banner, staff, whatever, much more than the existing one, which was a whole lot of nothing. So let's get started with some pre-glaze stuff here. And again, that's, that is what we're looking here to get on our bases. We're going to just grab ourselves any old... Hey, Inner Excellence, how's it going? Oh, thanks, Inner Excellence. Yeah, we... You know, we had old nine folds here. So after the success of doing these guys... And remember, each of these in metal would have cost somewhere around $23, $24 at least. Instead, we spent $5 and less time to turn them... Literally, less time to turn them into... Royal Guard. And all plastic things are way better. Uh, Breakaway Faction and Baratheon Starks defeated them. And one of the sons is a guest of the Starks. Uh, so they basically hate everybody. Okay. Yeah, I just have a feeling none of that stuff's ever going to show up here. Because obviously none of the November releases have ever showed up here. So I think that's just whatever I have, I have. And when that gets exhausted, there won't be any more. So yeah, we these right here so you can't get this this doesn't even exist anymore not even on the web store and if you could it would be a hideous 30 dollar fail cast this is a i think 36 dollar fail cast right here and so is this so yeah hey like a five dollar easterling figure a couple of hours of fun with green stuff and instead of several hours of it agony with uh oh gosh that hideous and I mean hideous, <laughs> like a beyond hideous, oof, fail cast. Anyone who's ever even seen that stuff knows the abomination that it was. It was an absolute travesty. We're going to start off just hitting our base here. 
got to figure out what kind of color horsey we want to do. We're also going to kind of bounce back and forth between some, maybe we do, oh, we'll do an asphaltum horse, maybe. Maybe we'll do that. And yes, folks, be sure to give Nestia a follow. Actually, well, now is that a faction, uh, Nestia, that you're looking to get? Or is it just kind of, eh, whatever, maybe, maybe not. Let's respect the umber. Throw a little bit of umber in there. We also just made that a little more liquid and a little bit of thinner because, well, the crevices, right? Got to get that down in those crevices. And the oil's real easy to make them get down there. Just get some. Look at that. See how it just sets right? Man, it's so hard to get the acrylics to do that. No, it was so much, so much easier. I just, uh, with acrylics, even with the airbrush, it's it's hard to even get the airbrush to shoot some paint down in there. As always, the oils just kind of say, look, stand back. You just, you just sit right there and I'll, I'll take care of all the scary stuff. Now, I was thinking of it, I'll have to reach out to a third party to paint them so I won't have time. Uh, are, are you suggesting that there is a stream possibility there? Because, well, think about it. All the Targs, that was all commissioned stuff. Zero of those, I, I, as much as I would have loved to be painting them for me, none of those were meant for me. They are in Idaho and Malta and other places that aren't here. So, yep, we've done that once or twice, haven't we? It would be, it would be absolutely horrible to see... A bunch of Greyjoys getting painted on stream. I, I, I know you would hate it. I know you would absolutely just not want to see that whatsoever. So I'm sure you are you are totally against that idea. Now, yeah, we're, we're doing an asphaltum start on this here. This, not as liquid as what we just did right here. Oh, and... Ah, I still have to upload this video. I was just going to say, and you could watch this. What we did here is we threw a bunch of the pre-glaze onto this and let it sit there. Even though none of these are staining colors, we let it sit there a good 15 minutes while we were screwing around with other things. Actually made a difference. Ah, yeah, see, clearly, Nessie, definitely, you don't want to see anything like that. I just, uh, I, I totally understand why you wouldn't want to see that. Wouldn't it be horrible? As we throw in a little bit of our black here. Just a hint of that. We also got our indigo blue out here, too. But I tell you, now, I wish I could have been painting some of these. I would have wanted to. However, actually, I think we'll be doing these tomorrow. Because I just, I looked at the calendar. I didn't realize that Monday is still, well, not only part of November, it's the last day in November. So instead of me trying to insanely rush around to do something with that ball rug now, we'll just we'll wait for Monday on him and... We'll paint our special Easterling characters tomorrow because tomorrow, who knows what the schedule is going to be because for all intents and purposes, tomorrow is Thanksgiving here. So I'm not quite sure how all that's going to play out. It might have to be more of a Saturday evening stream as opposed to a Saturday, or it might be broken up into a Saturday daytime and then a Saturday nighttime. I don't know. We shall see what happens. But we are going to continue with this asphaltum right here. We tried it, I think, on a Rohan horsey for the first time. Yeah, it was on a Rohan horsey for the first time. Now, in here, we'll do a little bit of our conacronome golden brown and some ombre. This color is one bad ombre. Yeah. Nobody's going to understand what the heck that means. But we will. We'll understand. And there's some of your quinac. And I'll get a little bit of red into this. Why not? What did I do for tassel? Tassel is actually... Okay, that's going to actually get to be blue. All right. Good to know. A little bit of that quinacronome in there. Also a bit of a staining color. Although we did discover... 
you leave that ombre on there long enough. It's not like it's going to stain in the same way, but more of it gets left behind anyways. Again, way less with the liquids here. Way more controlled. And then what we'll do is we're going to go, we'll shift over to the bases. We will do the same thing on them. Then we'll come back here, wipe some paint away. Then we'll come back to the bases, do the same thing. We'll wipe some paint away there. A little bit more of our umber here on the helmet. Hey, Sky King, how are you doing? Uh, the Inner Excellence, uh, watch the middle pigment. So. Oh, geez, yeah, Inner Excellence. I, have n I had no idea what to expect on those. Oh, that doesn't really need to be there. No, no big deal. I had no idea what the heck was going to happen with those things. I, I watched a couple of two-minute videos on there, which pretty much show absolutely nothing, unfortunately. Because there's no... Well, they were in Spanish for one thing, so that that's less good for those of us that are not the Spanish speakers. And then they were obviously just kind of... All they were doing is just painting a figure with them. Literally, that's all they did. They didn't do anything else with it. No shading, no nothing else. So I was hoping that might give you a bit of an idea. So Sky King, is that, uh, is that what you've been doing? Uh, I, I guess the, the creature caster... What, what's he? The zombie dragon or whatever? I guess... I guess he's 90% sold out, or has he all completely sold out now? Because I know that was that was one of the big things that was going on. I know Warlord has their Black Friday. I'm, I'm sure Victoria Miniatures has her Black Friday. I'm sure everybody's got a Black Friday. Oh, let's see. Dicky stumbles. I really enjoyed the sculpting stream last night, and got a, oh, well, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad, Dicky, that you were able to get some decent stuff out of that. Now, I know we brought these guys up a couple of times. Definitely check out the highlight of this because this was a couple of weeks ago. I think I just put the highlight up of this a few days ago, so that is a highlight. The entire session, you can go back and watch that. And we got Mishkun is new, got referred by someone asking a question about oil paints. Oh yeah, Michigan, this is going to be all oils, and we'll be doing this again tomorrow. So what we're going to do is we're going to match this color scheme right here. We're in what we call the pre-glaze. Now, to you, this looks, and anybody, even to me on screen, this just looks like a whole bunch of darks. It looks like it's all one color. However, when we wipe this stuff away, with our magic makeup sponges in a wee bit, it's going to reveal an entirely different set of colors. And we're going to go through, we do this every session, we kind of go through, well, what if you're getting started with the oils? What if you want to go past the starting point with the oils? Because we're just getting started here. We're, we're 15 minutes in. So Michigan, just hang around and we'll get to you. We'll show you like the starter set and some of the supplementary colors. You'll, you'll get to see all that good stuff. Hey, Snow Treasure, how are you doing? Oh, let's see. Oh, you were looking at that one. I, I guess that's, what, 10 inches tall or something like that, Sky King? He, he's really, really, really tall. Apparently, that was supposed to be sent here so that I could paint it on stream, and, and someone did a boo-boo. And as you can see, there was no there was no dragon here for us to paint on stream. However, that means, <clears throat> that means for December... We have dragons. Oh, and the theme for December is winter is coming. Again, I know Nessie is completely against that and absolutely hates the idea and, and has no idea what that might mean. But, yeah, so just how this is shadow and flame, just think winter is coming. You know, Ness, don't get excited at all, Nessie. It's not what you think. Haha. -ha. Or is it? It could be. Oh, that, that's good, Michigan. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we basically take our oil paints here. And one of the keys 
well, there, there's about three, four ultra super important keys to the oil paints. First of all, and you'll see these in the book of Wapple, more is less. Less is more, and more is way too much. Literally, way too much. You want to have the least amount of paint as possible. You want to almost be working in a dry brush. Once we get past this stage, it's going to look like a dry brush practically. The other thing is the miniature becomes your palette. You will mix on the palette. You're not going to be doing a lot of mixing over here. You're not going to be layering the way you would with the traditional, or what would you say, the traditional acrylics, right? Now, Michigan, there's no smell to Now, Kathy has a super sensitive nose, and she notices when I have it right next to her, but she likes oil paint. She used to paint with oils, so she just likes it. Because remember, oil paints, you're talking about, now I don't know if this one has both. Uh... Yeah, so that's linseed oil. That's not any kind of harsh whatever. That's just linseed oil or safflower oil. So that when you're smelling oil paints, that's what you're smelling. You're not smelling a petroleum product. You're smelling linseed oil and or the other, uh, the safflower oil. So yeah, that that's not, it's not like plastic glue. <laughs> you know, plastic or this. You know, that's just nasty vapors right there. But the oil put what you're, you're actually uh, smelling something that is natural. Oh, let me see. They yeah, asked Sky King, the winter is coming. That's going to, a couple of things. Obviously, lots of Song of Ice and Fire, right? Lots of Song of Ice and Fire. But I also have a winter dragon that, that I'm going to be painting on screen, on, on screen, on stream. So we'll be painting that and some other winter themed, ice themed. There's a faction of, was it War Cry? I think it's the Dark Elf faction. They're going to be painted in basically a, like an ice theme, some kind of winter slash ice shard type of a theme. Now, and who knows, I'm really tempted to paint up my Lord of the Rings elves with some snow. I'm just so tempted to do that. It would be really different. You don't see a lot of Lord of the Rings armies in snow. The problem is, I would have to paint some other army for them to fight in snow. And I'm not quite sure how that would work. There's not a lot of snow stuff except in some of the early ones. Uh, let's see. And I don't think my mom will let her use her oven for the Sculpey bases. Well, Nessie, that's not a problem at all. Because in the summertime, when it's warm here, I don't use the oven at all. Which, because, well, obvious reasons, right? What I'm actually doing is I am uh, using a, uh, was that, a toaster oven. Get yourself a toaster oven. Because they actually work really good. They actually work well, especially to sculpey sheets, right? If you're if you're baking an entire sculpey sculpture well they won't work so well but if all you're doing is just hello little hobbits spark my ganja uh, thank you william for the follow if you just bake baking sculpey sheets like this a toaster oven will do the trick and they're cheap right uh let's see michigan has once these paints are applied and dry oh geez no michigan they're actually more stable than acrylic paints uh, there's a reason why oil paints were used for houses and buildings for, well, a long time and would still be preferred today instead of acrylics. So all of my, for four years I've been painting all of my stuff with the oil, like all my Royal Guard here painted with the, or sorry, these are my regular Rohan. My Royal Guard painted with oils. Here we go. Once the oils are dry, guess what? This is the same stuff we use on our acrylic miniatures. This, it really loves the oils, actually. And the oils like this stuff. You paint this over the top, you got yourself a finished miniature just like it was out of acrylics. So yeah, all of my, all of my miniatures here. Oh, where's my, where's my, there we go. Here's some of my 
bum bum bum. Some of the Army of the Dead right here, all done with the oils. And I can show you some of the other things that we have. I'm going to let, actually, let me do a couple more bases here so that they can sit. So let me get a little bit of indigo and Prussian blue on these guys here. Just a little bit here, and then a little bit on this one. One sec here. I'll show you some of the other armies that we've been doing with the oils. Good to go. So here, we'll show you some of the previous stuff. Now, just did a Sisters of Battle army. That's all in oils. Yeah, man, the oils made everything easier. The non-metallic, the, the freehand, the OSL. Oh, thanks, Sky King. Uh, I don't think my... Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. That's crazy now. Oh, well, there you go, Michigan. <laughs> yeah, we painted our sisters of battle in them. Actually, painting space marines would be... That's, I'm going to be doing several series on painting space marines. I did all of my winter Russians, my winter Americans, and those were painted four years ago. Those were painted four years ago. Actually, I've got that M18 right here, if I can just snag that. There it is. One sec. Come on. There we go. Painted a bunch of my French as well. So I'm just going to go back up here. So this is that M18, and actually this just was dropped on the floor yesterday, and uh, none the worse for wear. So obviously oils are nice and rugged. Now we also have, one second, where's my, there's my tank riders. So here's my tank riders that I painted up in oil. So obviously an Imperial Guard, if you're translating that to 40k. A little bit of almost Imperial Guard-like action there. And then, uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll, we'll just go with those. That that should be good for right now, because I want to now get to the rubbing off of this stuff. Makeup sponges, which we are now going to cut into some smaller pieces, like this. Maybe a couple more. Absolutely love these. I still keep forgetting to get another batch of these sponges before I can't get them anymore. Because that's just going to be my luck. To really, really like these and then not be able to get any more. So now i got a whole bunch of different sponge shapes there that I can work with. Start wiping some of this away. That right there looks like uh, nothing, right? Oh, wait. Look what just happened. What just happened there? All of a sudden now, we have not just shading, but we have some color to it. Some actual color is happening. I'll actually, actually bring up my brightness a little bit. Uh, like Nessie says, it, this, is where you're, this is where that magical stuff starts to happen, right? Get some of this off of here and our scully friends. But Nessie, see how much of this stays behind? That's That was the experiment here, was these. And I said, wait a minute, a lot of that stuff stayed behind. Those aren't staining colors, but if you give them just, man, five, ten extra minutes or something like that, don't we always say, just don't be hasty. Don't be hasty, little hobbitses. When you're not hasty, you get rewarded. Haste makes waste. So yeah, Michigan, that's another thing that you'll be seeing in December is that I'll just be doing a, well, the, the homemade Space Marine faction that I was going to create, well, they're just going to be wintry, to say the least, uh, kind of like an ice shard type of a thing. So that's going to be something we'll be painting in December because I've actually... Well, the nearest thing to a space marine that I painted in oils is a Sigmarine, because that's what I will forever call these guys. They're basically fantasy terminators. 
with hammers. So it's like a Baratheon Terminator. That's hey Nessie, that's what this is. It's a Baratheon Terminator. We should I should have painted stags on his shoulder. But actually you can go back and watch this on the YouTube channel. I mean it's also I well, don't know, I don't think I, I didn't know that you could save everything as highlights, so I don't think it's a highlight. But it is on the YouTube channel. It is on the YouTube channel. Now here we're going to do some cheaty stuff right here, and we're just going to go like this. Because we want marble, right? I ain't never seen that before, because I ain't never done that before. Yeah, kind of fun, huh? How about we do some more of this? I just, I kind of got this idea about two seconds ago, and I thought, well, what better way to try brand new stuff we've never seen before? Live. It's handy here because the lighter color's got to go there anyways, right? So why not do that? It's the same motion we're going to be doing with a brush. Why not do it with our magical sponges? Let's get to this guy here. Let's hit the base here. And thank you so much, Armored Wolf, for that link. I try to put as many of these on the YouTube channel as I can. So, for instance, now you can also watch it here, but Schmandoff, the not gray, he is on the YouTube channel now. He's the most recent video that I posted. Of course, Kathy is insisting on Schmandoff merch. She she wants uh, Schmandoff t-shirts. I think she wanted to call him, uh, oh, that's right. She wanted to call him Sm Schmandoff the Beige. That, that's what she wanted to call him. So, if anybody, anyone who's in favor of Schmandoff the Beige uh, gear, well, now's your chance to express that desire. So I'll just take some more of this away here. Let's just get that sponge down. And this is what I love about these new shaped sponges here. Now, as I wipe this off, see, now it has a bit more of a reddish-brown look to it, not a radish, just a little reddish. Where we've got our indigo set up there, we'll just take a different sponge for these areas here that are supposed to be more of a bluish tone. If it blends together, that is no big deal because, well... We're going to be working from that. Last couple of sponges here. So what we'll do is we'll hit those couple of bases. Was it three bases? Yeah, the three bases. And then we're going to we're going to hit this guy and we'll see where that takes us. If we we could even prime up another. I got two more. Plus, well, the special characters, too. Although I, I'm thinking of trying to save those for Saturday. So, there's some of the paint removed. You can see we have some blue tints here. Some brown. A bunch of different colors, right? We've got our homemade filberts. Let's get some of these guys out of the way here. At least off the screen, they might be a little distraction. Hey, Mad Dave. Well, thank you so much, and same same to you. I hope that Thursday was decent for you. Probably a little bit on the unusual side, but hopefully still decent. Oh, let's see. I wish I didn't miss what the Easterling Rider looked like prime before the oils were applied. Oh, well, that's it. It's the same exact color primer, and I just brushed it on. And it's always Dino Res. Always Dino Res, and this pretty much these days, that's how everything looks. No Xenothal, none of that crazy stuff. Just literally brush on the primer. That's what they look like. Nothing fancy. And you can always go back and watch these things. Like I said, they all get saved as highlights because it, it seems like I can virtually turn this into a YouTube channel. So see, look at that. See how quick that was? Now, notice how little paint there is on the brush, right? This is practically a dry brush right here. 
Now it's almost like a dry brush technique. However, see there's no nasty dry brush stuff left behind it. But look, see that darker color that's sitting on there? Look at this. We got a steel in the house. Ah, join it from the train. Well, I'm sure I can't imagine why you would want to be on that train going anywhere near that Korean barbecue place. Because didn't you say that you were already 5% less on your indigo? Now, I'm sure that meant you had to take a trip to the art store and resupply and restock immediately. Actually, and then after you get that, you might have to go back again because who knows, we might sell out the world supply of indigo here. So I think every day you should just go back to the Korean restaurant. See, look at how that's changing color. See how some places it's cooler gray, some places it's warmer? See, so when you apply the coat of oil over the beige primer, yep, Michigan, all oils, and you can see it right here on the palette. See how they all look very dark, the same color? That's how all oils are going to be because oils, their, their pigmentation, their intensity is vastly superior to acrylics, and we have a little demo for that. Well, we have several demos for that, but I think we'll use this one right here. So this, actually, this is on the YouTube channel as well, but that was done with acrylics with fluorescent paint, no less. Fluorescent orange. Now compare it to the oils. Look at the intensity of the oils versus the acrylics. Look at that, look at that intensity there. And it gets even more dramatic. Here, let's, let's go to... Look at the intensity of the oil paints right there. They are just, this looks just yellow by comparison to that. Look at the burst of orange and deep orangey red. That's with the oils there. So the oils are going to, and also <laughs> the ability to have smooth blends like this. Yeah, there's just, there's nothing like the oils. Absolutely nothing. And you can still do plenty of freehand because remember our, our Von Trapp family banshees right here. We did these with oils as well. So you can still do freehand with no problem at all. We have some other examples of the color intensity of the oils, but ah, look at this. And no time flat. Already starting to get some decent little bit of color here, but see there's variation there. Look at that. Some is warm, some is cool. Hey, Rex, how are you doing? So still, all trains in Tokyo lead to that uh, to that establishment there. That uh, that sounds. I, I like that idea. I really like that idea. In a little bit, once we get the this next couple of bases hit here, I'll show you why we're trying to give sort of a stained, almost white look to the to the blocks here. But you can see how that's mixing there? That's because it's mixing with our pre-glaze. That's why we don't have the nasty dry brush edge. See that no nasty dry brush stuff going on? Do we got a Sarge in the house? We do. We do got Sarge. Dove and painting with Citadelic. Oh, that, that's really funny. Michigan, Michigan, get, get this. That is, we started, well, we started painting miniatures in 2001, and guess what we were using? Same thing. I mean, the same thing. So we, we have made that journey as well. Now let's compare this to that. So Sarge, I hope you had a good day yesterday and a whole bunch of chow, lots of chow. Uh... Check this out. This is what we sculpted last night. It was it was a crazy night of sculpting. Look at look at our blooming onion there. Look at the we had it fringe. We did lots of cloth here. Lots of cloth. Look at more cloth. Look at look at all the layers. Onions have layers, so do cloth, right? They got layers. Ah, still full. Yeah, see, we, the turkey he is not going to be, that's tomorrow for us. That's that's when Kathy will be making that. So right now she is making pies, and I believe the, the, the stuff for the stuffing, like the, the breadcrumbs and all that sort of stuff. Look at this. Is this not 
just criminally easy right here. Look at look at how that blends. Look at that. So that's uh, actually, ooh, you know what? I'll show you a couple of the armies that I did in the past that I really wish I would have had the oils for. Well, basically every single army I've ever painted, like ever. Look at this. We're just going to take a little bit of that darker color. Look at if we pull that up in here. Start to mix that around in here. But it has to be minimal amounts of paint. 12-hour uh, drive, sleep on the floor, grab pie, and be home by Monday. Yeah, Nessie, now, of course, uh, well, I don't know, maybe the traffic won't be so bad going through Indiana, but yeah, you'll have to, it's almost like the Gen Con drive. You'll have to factor in that, that last little bit there as you're crossing from Indiana into, into Illinois here. Give yourself a couple extra hours there. Or it depends on when you're you're doing that. Hey, we got ourselves a Drew in the house. Look at this. So, folks, be sure to give Drew a follow because he's one of our our late night friends. Definitely give Drew that follow, and also be sure to check out Drew's Etsy page where you can get war grips and not spend the rest of your life painting on dead. Paint jars, dead Reaper paint jars. Yeah, that that's a Reaper paint jar, right? This is how all Reaper paints used to come. So this is another reason why I like the oils because no company ever ever got rid of like scaly green and and shadow gray. Uh, no company named uh, Schmain Schman uh, Smirk Shop ever changed their entire paint line and got rid of colors. They've never done that. Reapers never change their paints. Nothing. That never happens. So, Drew, did, uh, I'm assuming that you just kind of took the night off last night, being uh, a certain uh, food consumption day. Yeah. So, so simple. So darn easy. Hey, Sculpt to Live. How are you doing? Oh, Sculpt to Live, the... Oh, you didn't get to see last night's session, did you? Or did you? Because we were sculpting like crazy last night. This is what we were sculpting. Dragon Knight, War Priest, and Amdur. Tons of armor, fringe, more armor, cloth. Now it got some work done on the Void Dragon. So there's a layer after layer of cloth. That was so much fun. We'll probably try and paint those guys tomorrow on stream. Ah, okay. I'm glad you got to see that. Hey, Dragon Eye. Been watching the oil mixing vids and prepping paint. I'm glad that you were able to, to start there, Dragon Eye. And I'm now the next episode... Of Dark Sword. Oh, actually, speaking of this miniature. So, this is a new thing here. I'm going to take Thalo Green, and boy, Nessie's really going to hate this, because I'm going to take Thalo Green, I'm going to do some color swatches with it, and then based on what we see, we'll take those same colors, and we'll we'll throw that on here. So we haven't actually done a color swatch and a miniature in the same video. That is one that, well, if I don't film it late tonight, it will be filmed Sunday or something like that. So before the end of the month, that video will be out. I, I don't know how many more I can do. It's it's going to be a crazy last couple of days here. And there's, there's other reasons why I kind of have to do a little less heavy-duty Internet usage. Uh, I like the streams, both innovative and old-school. Yeah, Steela, does, does it get much more old school than the green stuff? Uh, I don't know. I guess maybe there's there's probably stuff that predated that, but it's kind of hard to go more old school than that. Well, especially when you're going on top of 18-year-old miniatures. I mean, these things are at least 18, if not 17 years old right now. Uh, maybe Maybe they're 16 years old. So talk about old school. Oh, uh, let's see. And thanks to you, now I know why there's two colors for the green stuff. Oh, Sarge, I'm telling you, we didn't know why. Well, the, the whole idea of the different, especially this one here, 
So we got one, two, three, we got four different colors of green stuff. You can see the part where I had to do the most sculpting is the most yellow, where the most detail is. And then where I needed the most structural support, that's that's the most blue. That is the most blue. And if you, you look back at these guys here, remember? This was very blue, our banner right here, because we wanted that extra strength and stability there. Oh, yeah, Sculpt to Life, Milliput. That's it. <laughs> Rex does all his con uh, conversions in ZBrush. Uh, sculpt to Live. Uh, a quick question. Epoxy Sculpt. Where does that fit in to the timeline? Is that is that still post Milliput? Because Epoxy Sculpt is actually my favorite sculpting material. That, that, I, I absolutely love Epoxy Sculpt. The green stuff, I use it for conversions like these guys. But if I'm sculpting from scratch, it's, it's, it's kind of, now it's going to sound like a, a, whatchamacallit, commercial. I don't always sculpt from scratch, but when I do, it's with Epoxy Sculpt. Aves brand epoxy sculpt, that's much more modern. Okay, that's what I thought. Oh, thanks, Sculpt to Live. Well, let's see, which where's old nine folds? Yeah. So there's old nine folds, Guardian of the West Fold. Yeah, we we crammed nine folds into one tiny little area. This was also very much blue right here. Well, actually, we can. For folks that may not be familiar with what we did there, we can snag. Actually, we'll do a twofer here. So let's get our sculpting. So that's what they look like. And you can see on the robes there, way more blue. You can see on the, the helmets and some of the more detail areas, there's way more yellow right there. Now, the other thing we did, this was last week. We were working on our Candace chariots. So we'll be going back to those guys as well. And where's my... Ah, so the, the Witch King here. Now, that's another thing that we did on stream. We were painting that base. Absolutely loved sculpting that base. Now, this was the very first set of conversions that I ever did. These were all metal figures because that's all there was. We And it was the first time I ever used green stuff like that. So, yeah, this was about 2006 or something like that because I needed a Blood Bowl team. And yes, the Mimes of Moria, the most feared, feared miniature, or feared uh, race in all of Middle-earth. Balrog, Shmalrog, fear the Mimes. Let's see, Sarge says, uh, oh, let's see. Oh, you got your Liquid Frost. It seems to work better the goopier the application, although a thin, ooh, a thin layer over water effects. Well, we were kind of hoping for that. That sounds great. Actually, I'm gonna, I want to show you here. So, Lizardman Army. See those two engines of the gods back there? Those were scratch sculpted, mostly out of epoxy sculpt. The howdas were made out of sculpey, but the definitely the dinos 100% epoxy sculpt. And here with the Tomb Kings, the most of the stuff on that top level also epoxy sculpt, especially the two big blue guys in the back there, the Colossus and your Necro Sphinx. So a lot of epoxy sculpt there. Well, I'll catch you later, Stila. You you have some Korean barbecue for me. Uh, the Aves epoxy sculpt was on the market in the 90s. Blend it with green stuff for the best of both properties. Uh, what's the other thing? Oh, uh... Bees putty. That that's the new thing that that uh, Patrick Keith is using. He likes to mix green stuff with the bees putty, or I think that's what it's called, right? Bees putty. Let's see. So Sarge, I'm, that's the other thing. Oh, and that stuff is on the way. That's the new update. So that stuff was uh, it's on its way here. It's probably not going to get here till mid December, I would say. But that's okay because. You know, there's 31 days of streaming possibilities in December, so hopefully we'll be doing some nice wintry effects with that. Because I told them winter is coming. Like, literally, winter is coming. So you must get that stuff here if you want people to see how that is used. All right, so we're going to get in here with some of our touch of our golds here.
And as always, we got to have just minimal amounts of paint, right? You can see we're even going to take some more paint away from that. Yeah, Nessie, just uh, do a quick little Google few, uh, Google foo, and, and check that out. Yeah, it's by Green Stuff World, and it sort of creates a frost type of effect. Uh, element over in Germany. He follows chats in my sculpting channel streams. Ooh, yeah, fringe there. Now here, see how the the yellow is mixing with the blue. Well, that that's great. I want that to happen, but it does mean I have to go back and get some fresh paint. And by the way, this is not naturally a filbert. Remember, we made this out of a flat. We took a flat brush, made a filbert, because that's what we do here. We make our own stuff. <laughs> We don't sit there and pay 30-something bucks for some nasty fine cast miniature. We just buy the $5 figure and we have a blast in an hour or two and sculpt it ourselves. It's all our own. It's it's not way more or less uh, way more stable, right? Cuz that that stupid uh fail cast that also broke really easy. Hey Ryder, how are you doing? So Michigan, I actually have a magnifier light. I've always used magnifier lights, even going back to my 2D art days. Now this one, I can only have my three times diopter here. I wish I could have the five or the seven, but with all the cameras and lights, there's no room for that. So I do have a magnifier light here. Sadly, the magnifier light can't be turned on because it just kind of overwhelms everything. So... I prefer having the light on, but unfortunately that just doesn't work on camera, so we do what we can. Hey, Dice Cat, welcome back. Oh, Sculpt to Live, we'll, we'll do that. We, uh, about every other stream, we just make ourselves some more, we make ourselves some more brushes, some more fil- You can never have too many filberts. Literally, you can never have too many filberts, so we can make some here. And again, they just start out life as a flat, like this. So flat, you can see we did some filbert action on that. See how we just, uh, all you do is you wet the brush down, you take your scissors, and you just kind of trim these edges to make them a little bit more round. And we'll, we'll do that later on because we could always, could always use another. So we'll take this flat right here and we'll turn this one into a filbert. I'll just leave that right there, and hopefully that'll remind me to do that. So, Ryder and Dice Cat, I hope that you're doing good. Uh, I think we're all, let's, oh, uh, I think, yeah, I think we're all caught up. I think we are now caught up. So, again, we're hitting this with our cadmium yellow. You can see how some of our pre-glaze stays behind. Very nice. You can see how it's mixing. Look at that. You can see a little dark color on the end of the brush right there. Oh, Michigan, I use all the same stuff I would use for acrylics. There's there's no difference. I just never use acrylics anymore because, well, I can finish things 75% faster with the oils. So there's kind of no reason for me ever to use acrylics again. And also the oil is just way more vibrant than the acrylics. But everything here is the exact same stuff I'd use with the acrylics. Even this is the same. The brush cleaner is the same. Everything is the same. The primer is the same. The only thing that is different, obviously, instead of water, I'm going to use my high-quality thinner. This is really the only thing that would structurally be different outside of the paint itself. Brushes, everything else, identical. Primer, all of it, all the same. Which is, uh, that really makes it nice and easy, doesn't it? Ah, Dice Cat's got, he has this in his ear. Got yourself in your ear at work. Well, thanks for joining. I hope that this makes work go by a little bit quicker. Now we're going to do some glazes into this too, right? I mean, we always do something like that. It just takes no time at all. Now I just got back from a walk with the wife. Uh, so you wouldn't switch to a 
Uh, you could do that scope to live. The problem is you lose a whole bunch of advantages. Now again, this we painted this entire thing in oils, including the banner. And the advantage here was I, I moved that horse's head three times. If I was doing that in acrylics, I would have had to paint over areas. Because it was oils, I literally just took my brush and wiped it away, started again. I went, well, that's closer. Wiped it away again. So all of this is done in oils. The freehand is easier to do in oils than it is in acrylics because oils can be, you can go thinner with oils than you can with acrylics. You can paint with acrylics over oils. We do it, I've had to do it before, and everybody knows this, oh gosh, we have to show this. This is one where the first three painting sessions were with oils. Then I was informed instead of having to be shipped eight days into the future, it had to be shipped the next day. So it was already dry because it was a multi-day project. I painted the last of that with oils on stream. You can actually go back and watch that, that crazy thing. So I finished that up with acrylics because it literally had to be in the mail probably six hours after it was finished. So, yeah, and uh, I think actually there's another one here. It was uh, uh, No, this one. That's another one. Guess what? They said, oh, we screwed up. It has to be tomorrow in the mail. Okay, so I finished him off with acrylics too. All of the skulls, uh, the the horns, a lot of that was acrylics because it just it had to get done. But yeah, as as far as the oils go, doing something like banners freehand, ultimately that's going to be easier with the oils as opposed to as opposed to the acrylics. Not necessarily your first time using the oils. You, you might want to maybe ease your way into the freehand with the oils. Uh, that's just a little bit of a suggestion there. Oh, um, oh you know, let's get a little bit umber in here. Why not? A little bit of umber darken that up again. Oh, <laughs> thanks, so Sculpt Alive. Hey, Damiel, thank you so much for that subscription. He's like, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. He's like, oh, they're riding dogs again. First they were riding dogs. Then they were riding, like, elephants, right? The bigger horses. So, Damiel, I hope that you had a decent uh, a decent Saturday. Or Saturday. Well, I hope you have a decent Saturday because, well, that's tomorrow. But I hope you had a decent Thursday, a decent Friday, all that good stuff. Yeah, sculpt to live the that the freehand just gets so easy with the oils because again that the brush can be smaller because the oil thinner than water. Water has a surface tension to it and you're stuck with that. You cannot get water to be anywhere near as that's why oils have more capillary action, right? For washes and glazes and that sort of thing. Now we're gonna set that aside. Because of these, we need marble on those, do we not? Let's take one of our, these guys right here. Let's dive into, yeah, a little Prussian blue into this, maybe a little more. And again, it is also dry. Ah, Saturday for Damio. And you're on an oils run at the moment. Actually, what uh, what is the brand that that's going to be most likely for you to be able to find there? That I'm curious on that. You can hear that sound of the brush just scraping away. Because look at how that covers here. You would think it's just dry and there's nothing more to work with. Oh, there's plenty. See how we're just kind of rotating that brush around? Let's do this next one right here. Oh, yeah, what's the uh, sculpt to live? Oh, cap, uh, contrast paints, right? Oh, they got capillary action. Yeah, that that's that's cute. That's well, Oils look at that and they say, yeah, that that's cute. <laughs> you have capillary action. We feel so happy for you. Let, let us show you some real actual capillary action. Ah, mix of the Wintons and the Daily Rowney as we got a Rathu in the house. 
Let's see. Oh, do we see? Uh, sorry. Uh, Finches sent some photos of my test. Oh, okay. Thanks, Serge. Oh, that's really good. Thanks for doing that. Because, yeah, once once those stuff arrives from, from GSW there, I'm going to try and have as many things ready to go for some snow basing. So how you doing there, Rathu? Uh, I'm assuming that you are going to torment the Pyro Club folks tonight as, as they do their thing. So folks, I think that's going to be 8 o'clock Central. The Pyro Club begins their D&D their &D stuff. And if you're looking to get a, an RPG fix, definitely check out the Pyro Club and Zeltaris. Also, well, there's Harlan's Heroes on Sunday, if you can't catch them tonight. We're just taking a, a beat-up old brush, and we're going to use it as a blending brush here. Now, ah, that is the plan. That's the plan. Yes, yeah, uh, Nessie, you've heard me. How many times have you heard me say that? Oh, yeah, marble's really easy, and then you get to the oils, and uh, once again, the oils are just like, yeah, just step aside. Let me let me take care of that. I, I gotcha. Ah, uh, Rathu is the Twitch chat poltergeist. That's how that works. So again, just. Super, super quick blending here. Let's just take whatever old one of our not sable sable brushes and see if we can maybe throw some lighter effects into this here. One second, I'm gonna clean this bugger out a little bit better. Hey, we got Valfara and Zipzap at the same time. Uh, let's see, Zipzap tried to use the syringes. Uh, Zipzap, and, and I know. You may not have a bunch of these around, but these blister packs are fabulous because what I've seen is, okay, you mix your paint, right? You squeeze this like this, you can pour it into the bottles. Not all of it, but most of it, pour it into the bottle. Way less mess. Way less mess. Now, let me see. Uh, no, Damiel, they dry basically as I see them. They they might they might dry well. They will dry more matte, but they don't dry any less uh, vibrant. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Now some colors, like say a cerulean blue, that's a possibility, but then it always does that. I mean, it it, it the watercolor version does the same thing. That's just that's the nature of cerulean blue. Look at look at how hard this is. I mean, that's like shockingly hard, isn't it? Uh, zip Zap, maybe, uh, I don't want to say Dixie Cups, but something like a plastic Dixie Cup, maybe, that, that's more flexible, right? That you can maybe just do that little flex routine to it. Now, you can see how we just kind of, we sort of jump from one to the next here. Then we grab a little bit of color here and we'll once again do some of our little lines right here we haven't forgot mr. blending brush there oh Madison cups that boy dragon I, I had that kind of a, a vision I was thinking what what would I even call those darn things but yeah you know actually I should maybe well I'm not going to get any of those myself because I've got hundreds of blister packs here. I don't need to be getting that stuff. But I'll just try to remember that for when people ask because that could be something handy. So look at this. I mean, just boom, right? Does it have to be difficult? Uh, so Val Farah, Kathy right now is actually working on some pies and she's working on the stuffing because tomorrow is actually going to be our turkey day tomorrow is going to be the day see yeah, look at see we're breaking it down into smaller and smaller areas here oh zip zap the very first time when i was making these years ago the nail polish thing came with little funnels which was sort of okay until they overflowed and then what do you do with it do you wash that funnel? Do you try and clean it? Do you use it again? So yeah, that I that's why I gave up on all that kind of stuff. 
Yeah, Dragon Eye. I did, it's so weird because people tell me, like, I have no blister packs. I said, so do you ever buy Reaper miniatures or Dark Sword? They all come in blister packs. GW stuff, I believe, still comes in blister packs, right? We all have them. I think what it is is, well, most folks don't save them. Where's, uh, I mean, look at this. This is a, that's another Reaper blister pack right there. I save these things all the time. Look at, this is the, this is the top of a Warlord blister pack right here, this flat thing right here. Oh, Rex, that, uh, you, know, you don't have that many oil paints. Let's say if you have 20 oil paints, you only have to buy 2,000 hours of GW miniatures to have the blister packs. I mean, come on. Isn't 2,000 hours worth of blister packs worth it to have your paint mixed? Yeah, see, there you go. Oh, the Reapercon Mega Bundle. That's right. Now here, I'm not going to do too much because the the horsey is really going to cover a lot of this. But we'll just we'll get a little bit of our marble into here. So again, see how the the brush kind of just leaps from one side to the next. It intersects with other bits here. Some more. Hello, little hobbit. Spark my ganja. Thank you so much, Sabat, for the follow. That is appreciated. And, uh, well, Gandalf, Gandalf appreciates it, too. Or, <laughs> now we're going to have a war because we have, we have Schmandoff here. But, oh, this is another thing we could paint tomorrow. Or even later tonight, we could paint regular Gandalf here. And if there's a hair, if there's a terrible sword accident or something like that, it could be Gandalf the Spay, I guess. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Are you eyeing up any more paints? I I did not get a chance to snag the God. Oh, it's the Senelay, the Senelayer paints. That's I was gonna get those. I still haven't gotten them yet. I just I unfortunately I have to wait until some more. PayPal funds come through, and then I'll try and get those. Uh, let's see. Oh, hey, Marcus. How are you doing? No, uh, I'll read out to you. And what was up in Villa Park? And, and we got Al in the house, too. Hey, Al. How you doing there? So it, uh, actually, nice to have you in the chat, Mike Marcus. Nice to have you in the chat. That's that's pretty much... We haven't... Uh, well, we haven't seen anybody really since uh, March. I think. Yeah, I just go to the grocery. I walk to the grocery store, and that's about the extent of it. Now we're gonna break these down once again into smaller and smaller mini veins. See how this kind of cross. Now we there's still another little step to this. We're gonna come back in with our darker stuff. Wait, so see how this kind of just it flows this way and that way. This is another reason why the oils are faster because you, you see I didn't really. There's not a lot of stair steps to this, right? I just went in. See that darker paint down the end of there? See, how it, it's literally changing the color for me. I don't have to go back over here and mix more stuff. I'm just going to use what I got. Oh, they just finished. Oh, a uh, cabinet. Face frame. Ah, oh, that sounds uh, that sounds fantastic. There, Al. Oh, let me see. Oh, uh, Damien, I or I'm sorry, yeah, Damien, I don't exactly. There's some kind of uh, quicker drying paint, and they're just uh, go to DickBlick.com and just look through their oil paints, and you'll see the Senelay. I just never had a chance to pull the trigger on those because. I was going to, but then the PayPal funds had to go elsewhere. So I could not get those. I'm, I'm hoping maybe this week to be able to... Well, I don't know if they're still on sale. Or maybe, who knows, Dick Blick has some kind of fabulous... Actually, that reminds me. Does anybody know if Dick Blick has any fabulous Black Friday things going on? Uh, let's see. Where's a 
Did I miss something here? Let me see if I missed a... Oh, there we go. Why did you save 100 blister packs to throw them all away unless there's a space for a hobby as it is? So, oh, Arasu, like I said, when I was doing acrylics, I would always do mixing in these things. Also, they would be paint water jars. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to be really tough for me to get... Uh, I also use them for holding uh, miniatures and stuff. Yeah, here's... Uh, can see some old paint water containers right here. And right through, since I paint tons of Dark Sword miniatures and Reaper miniatures, which all come in blister packs, there will be hundreds of blister packs here for, well, as long as there's a Dark Sword and a Reaper, there will always be blister packs. And I just ordered stuff, this uh, free stuff for what you needed. Nah. <laughs> Let's see, what is the dragon eyes? Of course, I'm not trying to buy stuff right now. Oh, you, you definitely want to get some. You know you need some. You need more stuff. You need plenty more stuff. So let's get our green stuff out of here. We don't need that. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so there's a bigger blister pack filled with all kinds of goodies. Hey, ground affected, how are you doing? I'm having, actually, well, now I'm having a lot of fun because I'm getting to work on my Easterlings, and you're going to see some conversions that I was working on last night on stream. That was so much fun. See, I kind of went in there with some of my darker stuff here. Yes, you can go back and forth. You don't have to just put in more light areas. See, we just went back in there and put in a darker area. Put in another darker area here, and same over there. Doesn't doesn't uh, the oil just it makes that so freaking easy? It is so easy to do. It's almost like you're stealing. You're stealing time. Nessie just ordered some indigo. I'm telling you, Nessie, it is the. It's like the wonder color. Actually, what is uh? I forget the German word for color. I know what some of the German color words are. I mean, well, what's the German word for indigo? Because I know that the, well, blau is, is the, uh, let's see, rot is red, and blau is blue, uh, weiss is white, uh, what, uh, uh, gelb or whatever is yellow, right? We're going to darken up the edge of this here. Look at that. So darn easy. Let's see. The oils I bought are Arteza. Uh, Sculpt Alive. I think... Uh, did we didn't, did we have a little talk about the, the Arteza? You can give them a, sh a try. I mean, you have them. Give them a try. If they look kind of dicey, you could always, you know, spring for the, the starter set. A whole 20-something bucks or whatever. But just give him a try, and, and if, if you are not really satisfied with him, you say, well, okay, it was a try. Don't. <laughs> there's there's Damiel, who really wants to see those Senele. And thank you so much, Damiel. I, I will salute you there. Because probably since they're not on sale, that's about how much they'll be. So yeah, actually, that's about the perfect amount there. So, well, now I know what I'm doing. Later tonight, actually, uh, if Armored Wolf can just remind me, because I also need to... We need to stock up on more of our quadruple zeros. Hey, Grimly, how you doing? Indigo das Indigo. And uh, let's see. I'm guessing that's not far bay, because that's a little bit too French. Uh, let's see. Furbe. I'm going to say Furbe. Uh, no STLs. Have any... Oh, 3D printing. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, all printing is 3D. These. Well, is it? Maybe. All sculpting is 3D. We know that. All right, so that one's set. And then this one, right? Look at, look at all these fun, fun little noodles there of texture. Let's see, the only Windsor Newton you have on hand is Lamp Black and Burnt Sienna. Yeah, Sculpt to Live, the, that's what I always used was Windsor Newton. 
uh, even their watercolors. So I was familiar with that. That's why I got the Winsor Newtons. But there's a few Gamblins that have been really nice, like the Asphaltum has been very nice, and the Asphaltum Van Dyke Brown. To me, actually, I, I'd rather have that one than the Winsor Newton Van Dyke Brown. There is a difference between the two. And, of course, this has been the biggest surprise, Fanchon Red. So the Williamsburg starter set was on sale. It was a third of the price. I got it thinking I might like one, maybe two of the colors. I ended up liking all of them. And we've since obviously added those to our stable of colors, if you want to call it that. Oh, Damiel, that's uh, <laughs> it's a homemade mix. That's uh, that is some rum and uh, there's a little bit of rum in there for actual, you know, shall we say body. And then there's uh, I forget what the wine was. So it's actually rum and wine mixed together because the wine by itself doesn't have the satisfactory punch necessary so we added a little a little splash or two or three of rum into that yeah dragon eye the well believe it or not as much of a because my 2d printer is such a piece of junk it's actually almost easier even though it takes less time it's still easier for me to get a good print out of my out of my elegu than it is that junky 2D printer, which I still got to do the FDM stuff. So I will be asking you guys a plethora of questions about setting up the FDM printer because I need terrain very soon. Oh, look at that. Look at what we just added here. We don't always have to add the lighter lines. Look at this. We're going to do this again. Oh, yeah. Uh, Damiel, I just, uh, there's basically no more rum left because uh, Kathy sometimes maybe likes that as her, as we call it, stream sauce. So there was not much rum left, and I just kind of took the last little tiny bit of it, or maybe not so tiny, and splashed it in there. But uh, thank you so much for that, for the contribution there. That is well and truly appreciated. Ah, look at that. I look at this, and that, that Tomb Kings project, well, all those crazy bases. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a second. Time out here. Time out. Ah. Oh, no, it's over here. I do have it. Yes, look at this. I did an entire army on these bases. Not just the army. Every base, every movement tray, plus the display board was painted like this. Actually, there's a painting video on this on the Patreon page. Think of how easy this would have been with the oils, all of those bases. Yeah. It, it's a, I think of how much time, how much of my life I could have had back if I had the oils when I was doing this. Now, ah, yes, Dizzy Dragon Eye, that's because she loves, well, we both love the rum. I mean, both absolutely love it. It is a favorite. Uh, let's see. Oh. <laughs> so what's uh, Valfair? Is it more printing? going? Now here, I'm going to leave that be. I'm not going to mess around with that. We are going to do something else, though. We are not quite done here. We're going to take this here brush. We're going to respect the umber. And respect the umber. We're just going to take Burnt Umber here, and it's kind of on the drier side. Let, let's do a little bit of staining on this marble here. I know it's not really going to be easy to see where it's dark, but here, look at what I just did there. Uh, see, it's got a little bit more of a brown, stainish kind of stuff going on. Ah, so much easier. So much easier doing that with the oils. Now we need to also, speaking of some staining here, let's get some darks into this guy. And we're just going to draw that right over the top. So much easier to do that with the oils than with the acrylics. Oh my goodness. It's just crazy how much easier that is. 
Where's my umber? There's my umber. Now oh, let's see, Al is still using his, so he probably moves through it quite a bit more, but a little goes a long way, so I still have plenty of the starter paints. Well, Al, uh, thanks for, actually, thanks for saying that because here is my original starter set that I got four years ago. Look at that. That's me, just like Al was saying. I paint a you-know-what ton of miniatures. Look at how much is left of that starter set that I got four years ago. I'm using this right now. That This is sitting right here on the palette. This is on the palette right now. Actually, and, and so is the ivory black, and well, I was just using the phthalo blue the other day. So they are definitely viable over a long term, for sure. Let's see, do you ever do a dry day between painting? I can't finish a full thing in a day as I just up in Blend City. Well, actually, Damiel, that's a... Uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to see you know, some of the army painting videos, but every series, everything is dry between episodes because it takes... Hey, Sarge, thank you so much. Shots fired. Is it heat or sabo? That's what we want to know. He's like, Wait, where the heck did he come from? That was a different horse. So it was doing a whole bunch of these guys. Obviously, they dried. Same thing for the Necrons. They dried. Same thing for the Sisters. Let me grab my... Ah, here we go. So here's a case of... This was actually, it was dry at a certain point. I did not like how the object source lighting was coming out with the, the lighter colors. So I took phthalo green and actually was doing glazes over it. Did phthalo green glazes over that. Ah, and Nessie's favorite, that's why he cheers. He cheers the, the glow. Ah, all using HE. Ah, just saying, just saying, two, two. There you go. Let's get back to our umber here. I have no idea what that thing was that I just saw. I don't know what the, I don't know where that came from. Don't know what that could be. Valfera might know what that thing is. Valfera might just know what that thing is that we're talking about there. I have a feeling Valfera knows. See, the only ever thing I ever finished a day took about 40 minutes, but anything that needs little details and needs a dry time. Now, Damien, I'll have to send you some of the some of the videos because obviously, uh, where's the guy that we were just doing? So this one right here, this was on the last Patreon video, which we are going to upload. He was about like this. So this is what I had done in acrylics over a year ago. Basically forgot I even had these guys to finish off. So in 23 minutes, obviously the, the color is a little bit different. We took it from this to this, and that was all the detail stuff. In about 20, to see, we, we had to paint the marble here, and we painted all the all the fun little non-metallic metal things right there. I want to see you paint that thing in one day. Oh, there it is. Oh, well, oh the, the train, the hype train. Which, I mean, obviously that uh, that could be arranged. Let's see, where did my... There it is. Who, who just... Fi oh, Sarge is firing back, yeah. I don't think Sarge is going to let you just have that. Mm -mm. Sarge is saying, nope. I got Sabo here. I got heat. I got, I got a choice. I got all kinds of ammo here. I might even change. Yeah, the Winton, or I, I didn't really, uh, when I first got that set on Amazon, I didn't realize there was a difference. I just saw Windsor Newton. And then I got the set and I went, that says Winton. What does that mean? Uh, you know, as it turns out, it's really not a huge difference, really. The biggest difference... So say we all! So say we all! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There we go. Uh, what's the What's the countdown on that? Now, 49% to a level 1. 49% to that level 1. You know what it means. You know what that hype train's going to mean. 
Here, let's get uh, a little bit more of a dark in there. Hey, Von Kierpiece, how are you doing? Uh, let's see, so are there metallics in oil? Oh, uh, Michigan, I just did a series. Oh gosh, I don't have any of the... Wait a minute. No, I don't have any of them in here. Oh, thanks, Velfera. So, Mishka, uh, I actually just did a series on TMM in oils. Now, there are several different types here of metallic oil paints. Where's my silver? So, just regular oils. Williamsburg has a bunch of interference colors. Gamlin has a silver, and actually is a decent one. Now, Ah, ooh, Sarge really firing back there. MIG Ammo has way more selection in their, their oil colors, but where the heck did he is? So, see how that's kind of a... Here, watch what happens. See how that kind of changes colors a little? That's that blue interference paint right there. There is also... And see how it, it goes from purple to a blue... So there are definitely metallic oil paints. They're just going to be more expensive, and they're going to be more of a specialty type of a thing. So thank you very much, Sarge. Uh, let's see. Like Al says, the... Oh, gosh, do I have... Ah, here we go. So this is a typical MIG ammo oil brusher right here. And I used to use these all the time. This is what actually gave me the idea to do this. So these literally were my way of making my own oil brushers. So that's the size there. How much is in here? 20, uh, 10 milliliters. So you only get 10 mil in this thing. Oh, folks, we got Jarrett Terrain Minis. You need to give Jarrett the follow. So Jarrett, I hope everything's going good. Uh, welcome to the weekend, because now it's the weekend. And thank you so much for the, for the bits and cheers there, Jarrett. So we're at, we got, what, 65% to our level 1 so that we can get our hype train going. Oh, look. We're going to make ourselves a couple little teeny tiny cracks here. Actually, oh, so Sarge, uh, when you have something like uh, like uh, all the, the food for Thanksgiving going on, does that drive Bodie crazy, all of the smells and that kind of stuff? I was meaning to ask. And does Bodhi just kind of hang around where all the, the food is being prepped, hoping that maybe something accidentally falls onto that kitchen floor? Yeah, well, we're still we're 65% to the level one. We still got to reach it. We are, we are shy. We're shy. Of course, last time somehow I got to a level 2 and didn't tell me, but here it's telling me it's at 65% to level 1. And end of it. Ah, she camped out under the table as Valfair gets it up to 67% with one minute left. A minute remaining. Can the stream heroes provide that last push to the hype train? Don't say we all. Don't say we all. Oh, we're at 98%. We're, I think we're going to get there. I think we're going to get there. Yes, there it is. We have now attained the hype train. What does that mean? What does that mean? Yes, it does. That's what it means. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Thank you so much. There it is. There's your hype train. Bam. Ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. I. When's the last time we heard that thing? It's been like a week or something since we last heard that. So I was missing the hype train. I was really missing that. So I'm just going to kind of... Blend some of these guys away here a little bit. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> uh, I really appreciate it. And thanks again uh, to our monitor and all of the folks that just contributed to that wondrous cackle of sound right there. Because I really love hearing that thing. I can't get me enough of that hype train. 
Oh, geez, Sarge. Yeah, now, Sarge, that's not the... I still can't find the one that's primed and ready to paint. I still have no idea where the heck that thing is. So that one, I'm going to have to prime that so that we can do all the weathering and such on, on stream. Now, I might have to do some sculpting on that because I was kind of hoping to get, like, the red star going on that thing and kind of make it uh, something that would be the Leningrad Express slash Stalingrad Express. So that we could use them for those campaigns. Now we're going to get in here. We're going to put some so cracks here across the face. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I think. Uh-oh. <laughs> we just attained a level two. So we'll just... Uh... It's coming. So it's coming down the track. All. It's coming down the track. There it is. There it is. There it is. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Actually, if we go like this, does it make so that? We there we go. There it is. <laughs> so I just don't know if I can make it do the, uh, you know, that the Doppler effect there when the train is going by. There's not quite, my arms aren't long enough, I don't think. Oh, thanks, Dr. Feedgood, and thanks, Damiel, for all the subs there. So say we all. Not Cranston Snort has himself a sub. Look at that. So yeah, we got ourselves. We we finally got to. Ooh, we got a double hype train. That doesn't happen. Ah, thank you again, Doctor Fee Good. Although you know what that could mean. That could mean there's a so bit screen. We all. So uh oh, I think we just got to level three. I think we just got to level three. Well, let's uh, tone that down a little bit. At this point now, we're just gonna we're gonna do a straight so up toast right all. here. So Trip number three. Here we go. What does that say? Say you should never operate a train under the influence of uh, beverages. So there. So there it is. We're gonna operate the train under beverages. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Now, the other thing, didn't so we say we, all. So we need to figure out how to say hype train in, in Russian? How do you say hype train in Russian? That's the, that's the next, uh... So say we all. So uh, looks like we're at 60% to a level 4. We're at 60% to a level 4. Uh, what was the, what was our record? It was 200 and something without actually crashing the stream, right? It was something like that. Uh, I think we got to 260% of a level 5 or something. That was crazy. I think that was when, oh, that was when Avocado Kids did 36 subs. 36 gift subs or something like that. It was just, it was like, what? Holy smokes. Uh, so thanks again, everybody. That's uh, well, obviously it sure as heck helps a lot. It really does. Now I've got me some lighter colors. You think that's light? We can go way lighter than that. We can go way lighter. Is that is that Sarge Fire Bay? Yeah, I thought so. I thought I recognized the sound of that round going past me there. I recognize that whistle. I was like, is that an 88 or is that a is that a long tom? What did I just hear whiz by my head? And if it sounded like a freight train, it's got to be Sarge. Oh, well, okay. Uh, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to try and screen capture that real quick here if I can without messing things up here. All right, just screen capture that. So hopefully that is correct. Uh, it looks like, uh, well, we got two different words there for hype. I guess there's two different ways, really, of, you know, what is hype? You know, there's there's hyper, as in that, and then there's also you're hyping something. You're making, I, I guess there I could see a couple of different words for hype train. Looks like we are 78, oh, 81% now. 
81% to a level 4. 81% there. Uh, look at how easy it is to do all this stuff. Look at that. Ah, it's 120 mil. So, yeah, Sarge says, posh you and your anti-aircraft guns. Posh those guns. We're, we're going we're gonna to go straight to the heavy-duty stuff here. There are 86% from Dr. Figut and Valfira. I don't know. I, I could be wrong, but I think somebody just ain't got enough choo-choo yet. I think somebody wants themselves a little bit more chew in their chew. So a little bit of liner stuff here. Where's Mr. Blending Brush again? Or any brush can be a blending brush. Uh-oh. Look what we just got. Nessie, ooh, Nessie really fired big time here. I'm just going to leave that thing on for a little while. Yeah, we'll just leave that on in the background here as I do a quick little bit of a blend there. There's three different sounds, so that's one. Then there should be a second one. That's going to be your uh, your train whistle, right? Oh, it's almost there. There's our, there's our next sound. Sure it goes, right through the screen. A Ford and Massive Cravat. <laughs> and that uh, that takes us, geez, 10% into a level 5. So thanks, Fort. How are you doing, Fort and Master Cravat? Uh, and and, and Lamines in the house. So Lamines, how are you doing tonight? Ooh, let's not forget these guys here. Oh, Nessie, this, this thing actually, seriously, it's a, it's a little train. The, see, there's your traction on your wheels right there. And this actually goes around the track, and there's so several cars that hook up to this. So uh, we'll catch you later, Sculpt to Live. I, I, uh, whoa, that sounds really exciting, actually having a new sculpting studio ready to go. So, Nessie, that's part of my movable terrain for my Bolt Action games. I wasn't kidding when I talked about that's why I wanted to say something in Russian, because it's going to be part of the... It's going to be part of that that train that comes out of the uh, either the Red October factory, delivering some some T-34s directly to the front lines. So oh yeah, that thing. Uh, you can hook up a passenger train to it. Where's the coal tender? So there's the there's the coal tender right there. Yeah, it's serious business right here. We take terrain seriously. Oh, Massive Krabat painting some Carthaginians. So how many of those go on a stand? Is that kind of like the four to a stand typical layout there on the Carthaginians? So on the, uh, Well, thanks again, everybody. Wow, that's uh, I didn't expect to uh, get almost all the way to a level five there. I'm glad we did, though, because, well, we got to hear us some hype train... So actually, just go check out the blog, and that'll uh, you can see that there's actually I've got some T3485s sitting on a literally on the train uh, on a flat car. Well, let's see, two minutes to get to about 73% more. Now I do have speaking of speaking of Lord of the Rings and some conversion. Oops, oh Sarge fires a well. He's going 120 mil. So is it any wonder? Why it's the uh, when that round drops, it makes a big noise. Uh, yeah, what I'm gonna do is get a little bit of my lighter color here on some of the the rocks there, not rocks, stones. So say we all. So say we all. No, oh, they're let's see, uh, it's for saga, so they can be individually based. Oh, that massive crop cravat. I'm using a bunch of foot sore miniatures for done lendings and for Harad. Yes. Far Harad and Harad, especially Harad. Because they just well a lot of it you can't even buy. Even if you had the money, GW is out of stock on a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna be taking the uh, some of the was it the uh Araby and some of the 
some of the Persians. I know that. We've taken some of the Persians using those. Uh, look how nice and smooth all that stuff is, right? So say we all. So say oh, we're at 64. He's beefing the whole train. He's trying to get one more train, one more choo-choo going. Now, see the, the Scully friends there? I want those to have, see how they're a little bit too close to the uh, stone cover? We're going to change that. As Dr. Feegood says, oh, no, I will not be denied one more hype train. I shall not be denied. Now, to do a little bit of a glazy thing here. A little bit of a glazy thing. Boy, we're at 75%. We're getting mighty close. That's a whole bunch of your thinner, right? A whole bunch of thinner. But all we can do is touch the brush there. We can't do anything else except just literally touch the brush to this. Because as soon as you start moving around, see how it's it's mixing and doing all that kind of stuff? But it does stain those quite nicely. I gotta say, it does a real nice job of staining those. Uh, let me see. Master Crew got lots of cool ancient options. Paint up almost a whole Republican Roman army. Oh, Victrix. Yes. Oh, Jarrett loves the... Emo oh, that's... Uh, I guess I'm going to have to get the... Uh, oh, it, do we get to the uh, level 5? Or did, uh, well, actually, here, what I'll do is... Uh, let me Let me get this other little bit of a glazy thing on here and... Maybe we'll just do one more, one more train blast if uh, it's timed out on us here. All right, so let's do one more train blast. See that? A little bit of brown, a little bit of our umber there. So it's choo-choo time. One more blast of the hype train. Yeah, you can hear that coming down the track, coming down the track, coming down the track. Where is it? There it is. There it is. Boom, 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 boom. Actually, let's see what happens. Does it actually move here? Oh, yeah. It moves. And that's with no tracks. But there, it, uh, oh gosh, I forget what the next, I, I'll have, hey, uh, Nessie, I'll try and send you the link because I think your kids would have a blast with it. <laughs> like, literally have a blast with that. And this way you could hear a hype train in your house 24 hours a day. You would love it. Ah, well, Damien, we get, uh, you get some bonus coverage there. I really appreciate all of the, whether it's a level 5 or even just a level 1, it makes a big difference. Uh, that's, why, that's why there are things like interference paints and all that crazy stuff, because all of the stuff that from the, the bits and the cheers and contributions like yours and Armored Wolf and Sarge and Belfair, everybody that and Dr. Feedgood and all the folks have been firing bits into that Nessie and such. Ah, Dave, it really it uh, it's a huge help. I was just trying to tell somebody right before we started here because uh, well they talked about. Uh, the, the whole partner thing has been kind of a big topic lately because, well, Brush for Hire was uh, able to be successful. And, you know, definitely that's really great. Really happy he was able to get it. But I guess uh, uh, Reiner, unfortunately, wasn't able to, to push through the partner thing. And I was trying to tell them that, it, yeah, it's beyond, I guess, it. well, they make it really, really hard, <laughs> to say the least. And they kind of do tricksy things with your numbers and such. And I tried to tell them that, yeah, you know, the hype, uh, the uh, the partner thing is great, especially when Twitch tries to steal your bandwidth and give it to somebody else who is a partner when you're not. Now, let's, we are going to do a couple little highlights in some of the cracks here. Let's do that now. But stuff like this, the, the hype trains and everything, I, I try to tell, well, that's that's a whole other part of Twitch that, yeah, partner is great, but then, you know, there's there's hype trains and other fun things like that. There's there's other ways of contributions through Twitch besides just a, a bunch of bodies. Well, a bunch of bodies are nice. It doesn't always 
can't always have lots of folks. Oh, thanks, Damiel. I, I appreciate that. It, it really does feel like, uh, can you imagine what the oils were like back in April when most of the reaction was, well, you can't do that. What do you mean, oils? And now, just in the chat here, how many people have the oils besides just about everybody or is just a, are literally on their way to getting more right now or mixing their own right now? That that makes me feel fantastic because with you for years on YouTube and Facebook Live, just could not really get folks to see just the potential, the possibilities for the oils. And then Twitch here, wow, huge difference. My goodness. I think it's just because people here are actually watching stuff. They're not just watching for two seconds. They'll watch for a while. Oh, actually... Uh, Valfera, I kind of use them both. So this is the neutral. I, I call it sandy, but this is the neutral, and this is the light flesh. So you can see one is a little bit more pink, one's a little bit more yellow. These two have kind of emerged as my new favorites. I used to love the ebony primer. Is this the ebony? No, that's not the ebony. Actually, I do like uh, this slate-colored primer here. I actually do like this. I just never get a chance to use it, sadly. And then, actually, this one's a neat one, too. This is another one I never get to use. Who knows? You might see this mixed with white. When I run out of those other two, you might see this mixed with white. Ah, uh -huh. Gunk uh, Funk Hair Pieces shopping for the oils this weekend. Let's see. Oils are down to you. It extends beyond Twitch. Well, I'm really, I'm, kind of, I'm just so glad about that because uh, you can see how much fun that I've had with them. And then look at this. Look at how nice and easy it made all that.